Hello again, everyone. My name is James Shotwell. This is Music Biz, and in today's video, I'm gonna give you the four things that you need to get started as a writer in the music field. Now, I don't mean talking about songwriting. I'm talking about being a music journalist, a music critic, somebody that talks about what's happening in the music industry. If that's something that appeals to you, then this video has the answers you're looking for. Something I've always found to be true about people in general, but especially in the world of music, is that everyone is looking for somebody to give them permission. Everybody is looking to somebody else to say, you can do this, you have the ability to do this, why not try this, whatever you want to say. But the truth is, in music writing, it's all about taking the initiative. And that's the first and probably most important thing I can tell you. If you want to write about music, or you want to have a YouTube channel, or a podcast, or a TikTok, whatever it happens to be, where you discuss music on a regular basis, it's on you to do this. Nobody is going to reach out and say, hey, we need somebody to do this. That's, that's just not the way things work. You have to take the initiative and the opportunities will come later. So first and foremost, if this is something that you want to do, and I mean really want to do. If your life revolves around music, you love talking about it, you feel you have something unique to say about it, then this is on you. So take everything that I say after this to heart, apply it, and you will get ahead. But you need this initiative. You have to follow through. Okay, now that we've gotten rid of all the people who are kind of on the fence and I'm left with everybody who has the initiative, who's going to follow through on this project, you want to start by having some kind of web presence. And that begins with figuring out what it is you want to do. Do you want to make YouTube videos? Do you want to make podcasts? Do you want to make TikToks? Do you want to write about music? Do you want to do some combination of all of them? Figure it out. <laughs> make a choice. Make a decision of some kind. You can always change your mind later, but choose one to get started. And then make sure you have all the branding locked down. Now, personally, I feel everybody should have a website. Because if you start a YouTube channel, you don't really get the custom URL for quite a while. It takes a little bit of time to build up that steam. And also, you, you want a central hub of some kind. You want to own the place where all of your content is living. And if you just rely on YouTube or something else, you are always up for them changing a policy or them doing something that hindered your ability to continue doing what it is that you want to do. So if it's me, I'm starting my own website and I'm probably going to use some kind of branding for it. I want to have musicreviews.com, but of course that's going to be taken. So it's going to have to be something more specific. I live in the Midwest, so maybe midwestmusicreviews.com or music critic James or something, hopefully better sounding than that idea, but you get what I'm saying. You need some place where all of your content is going to live online. Now, I'm not saying that you only write for yourself for the rest of time or that this is the only website that you ever make or the only channel, but you need somewhere to get started. And personally, I think websites are a good start. If you can find a service that allows you to create a free blog like Tumblr does, that works as well. But in general, find a place where you can have a presence, choose a name, and make sure that you lock down that name everywhere. If you use a service like Name Checker, it will allow you to see if a name is taken on a whole bunch of sites all at once. So if you find one that isn't, claim it everywhere and make that the hub for all things that you create moving forward, at least to start. Now, the third thing that you need, which arguably you could start creating before you make a web presence, is content. And, and I hate using that word because I feel like it really undersells what it is that you're trying to do. You're trying to express yourself. It's more than content, but for the sake of simplicity, we're going to call it content. Now, no matter what it is that you want to do, if you want to start your own music publication that becomes a big profitable business, or you want to be an influencer channel of some kind, or you want to write for Rolling Stone, you first are going to need a portfolio. And this is where all this content comes from. So before you worry about being on mailing lists or getting the approval of your peers, just start creating stuff. Just start making things. If you want to write about bands, write about the bands that you love. Make videos about the bands that you love. Make TikToks about the songs that you can't get enough of. Do whatever it is that you want somebody to pay you to do in the future. Just do it to the best of your abilities about the artists that you already love with the materials that you already have available to you. I'm going to assume that because you're on the internet, you probably have a subscription to a streaming service so you can listen to literally all of the music ever released pretty much. So go ahead, find what makes you happy, what sets your soul on fire, and create something about it. Write about it, talk about it, do whatever it is that you want to do, and just build up a little wealth of content. And make sure it's grammatically correct, make sure that it looks good, sounds good, whatever it happens to be. Make the best things that you can possibly make with what you have at your disposal. And you're going to really need that when we get to the next step. So now that we've taken our life into our own hands, we've generated some content about the things that we are already passionate about to prove that we are serious about what we're doing and we've locked down our presence online, it's time to start working on relationships. Now at the end of the day, it all comes down to relationships in the music business. You can get pretty far without the rest of the industry paying attention. I mean, especially if you're on a platform like TikTok and people really like your videos, you may not need label or publicist ties to get that far out there in terms of growing an audience. But if you wanna start making 
making connections and building an actual career within the industry, eventually it's all gonna come back to who you know. So now that you have your content, you have your web presence, it's time to start telling people about what it is that you're doing. And I mean that by people within the music business. So the way that I did this in the past, and the way that I think you should as well, is to just write down a list of everybody that it is you hope to work with. And I mean artists, record labels, publicists, whatever it is that you have in mind of working with, make a big list, and then next to that, that list of names, write down all the contact information you can find. Now, if it's somebody like Universal Music Group, you're probably gonna have to work pretty hard to find specific people to email, but if it's a record label or a publicist who maybe has a big roster of talent that you enjoy, you'll probably be able to find their personal email addresses by clicking around on their website or just doing some crafty Google searches. It, it, a lot of information is out there, it's pretty easy to find. Now, once you have the list of people that you hope to work with and the list of contact information that you can find, it's time to start reaching out. Now, there are several ways that you can approach this. You can write a different letter to every single person, which is perfectly acceptable, but you could also write a form letter where you just swap out specific pieces of information like names and releases and artists to make things go a little bit quicker. Both work, but in each case, you need to be as professional as possible. Present yourself like you know what you're doing, because trust me, that will help you quite a bit. Don't, don't act like you have no idea how to get started. Act like you know what you're doing and that they need to get on the train because you are leaving the station, you are moving forward in your career, and they should be paying attention to what's going on. Don't come across as condescending or too egotistical. Be nice, be polite, but also take yourself seriously. So I would recommend reaching out to people and saying, hi, I'm so-and-so, I've just started making content on this website, this channel, whatever, put in the name here, add a URL, and I'd really like to be added to your mailing list. Now the beauty about this is that adding people to mailing lists takes basically no time, costs the person nothing, and it has basically no risk to it whatsoever because you're not gonna get immediate access to music, you're not gonna get concert tickets as a result, you're just gonna get press releases. And if you choose to respond, they can then go back and decide whether or not to give you access to things. But being on a mailing list costs basically nothing, so just ask for that. Ask them to be put you on the mailing list, and then also include links to content that you've already created because as we said, you've already started your portfolio. You have some stuff that you've made that you're proud of, and you're gonna want people to see it because you want them to know that you, again, have the follow through, that you're not just saying that you want to write about music, you are actively writing about music and you would like to write about the things that they have to share. So tell them, tell them who you are, where you come from, what it is you do, and then show them what you do. And then you know, politely end the letter, say that you look forward to hearing from them. I'm going to say that 60 to 75% of these people will add you to their mailing list, even if they don't respond to you, and you'll start getting press releases. And when those press releases come in, no matter who it's from, whether it's the most sought after person on your list or somebody that you only kind of care about, use them. Start making content around those artists, especially if you like the thing that it is. Start promoting that talent, because when you do that, you're gonna start developing the relationship with the publicists. They're gonna just put you on a mailing list, probably not think about it again, and then they're gonna get another email from you that says, hey, thanks for sending me the press release for this thing. I made a news article about it, I wrote a review about it, I told people about it on our social channels, whatever it happens to be. And when publicists see that, or a record label sees that, or whoever sees it, they're going to be very happy. They're gonna be like, oh, this person is seriously trying to help promote this thing. And they're gonna look a little closer at you. And as you keep doing that, you're gonna develop a relationship with the individuals on the other end of those press releases. And that's going to lead you to new opportunities. But also, when you get a wealth of portfolio content behind you, stuff that you're really proud of and you're ready to take your career to the next level, maybe trying to write for Rolling Stone, for example, and you start pitching ideas, you're going to need those relationships with those publicists to help get you access to stuff. You can't just write Rolling Stone and say, hey, I wanna do an exclusive interview with Post Malone if you don't know the people that work with Post Malone. The best way to get there is to build your relationships, continue networking, continue proving yourself, and reach a point where not only do you know the people who know Post Malone, but you also have a body of work that they respect and recognize. So that when you go and say, hey, I'm trying to pitch a story about Post Malone, could I set up an interview if I also get Rolling Stone on board? And they say yes, because they know what it is that you do, they know that you have the follow through, they know that you produce quality work, but it's all about those relationships. It's all about taking the initiative to do it yourself, to make a name for yourself, and have high quality work and be a nice person and be somebody that people want to continue working with. Now, I know before I look at the comments that this is an oversimplification of the process and that it's not the same for everybody. There are certain people who have way more opportunities than everybody else right out of the gate. And this is not about privilege. This is not about anything like that. I'm just saying, for most of us, we all start at zero. We all start with no recognition in the music industry, no body of work behind us, no connections to anybody in any positions of power. All we really have 
is the passion that we have for music. And the best thing that we can do in those situations is to utilize that, to make the stuff that excites us, to make the things that we want to see. Because why are you trying to be a creator if all the things that you want to see in the world already exist? There's something that is missing and that's why you feel the need to create stuff. So figure it out, start making that stuff, and then start sharing it with people, both the general public and people in the industry. And maybe not everybody will like you at first, but somebody will, and you'll start building relationships, and those relationships will lead to more relationships. And before long, you'll have an established presence in the music business, and where you go from there is entirely up to you. Some people leave, some people rise through the ranks, some people get a job in a different sector of the industry, but if you follow through and stick to what it is that you do and just keep making things that excite you, make you happy, make you interested, things that you find entertaining, you're going to find an audience, you're going to build your presence, and you're going to be a part of the music business. Now, I am always happy to answer questions, so leave any questions that you may have down in the comments below or send me an email or hit me up on any of the social channels. I think there's a link in the description. But if you haven't done so already, please subscribe to this channel. Music Biz is here to help you understand the industry, where it's going, where it's been, and all the lessons that we can learn along the way. When you join this channel, you're joining a community of people who are driven towards making a better industry for everybody. So if you haven't done so already, please click subscribe. And if you have, well, I thank you for watching to the end of the video. That certainly helps us out. And I will be back again soon with more content. But until then, take care of yourself because you deserve it.